What we're going to do first of all is we're going to uh, grab the ODP card which is usually located near a service port and we're going to have a look at what was last done on this vehicle. We can see that number one indicates there was a leak detected. It was nitrogen charged evaporator core as a small leak so we've since replaced the evaporator core and uh, number five indicates that there's no refrigerant in the system at this point. So what we're going to do now that we've made the repairs is uh, we're going to uh, hook on the gauges, we're going to pressure test the system and make sure that we've repaired all the leaks. We can use the service pit, uh, port here for our high side fitting. The high side fitting just clips on over top and then we just simply turn the knob in to depress the Schrader valve and we'll do the same thing on the low side port. We're going to uh, remove the low side cap now from the Schrader. Very important caps are left in place. Uh, the cap, uh, especially on the low side, is important for keeping out dust and dirt, but it's also uh, going to protect the system. There's a Schrader valve in here and uh, this Schrader valve in a low pressure situation can actually go into a vacuum and cause air to be drawn in past the Schrader valve which would add uh, water vapor. We don't want any water vapor, one droplet can cause problems with freeze up in the evaporator. So we just simply hook on our Schrader valve and uh, turn the fitting in and we're ready to go. We're going to be using a Robin Air Bull Tech AC recovery machine. All the machines come with a manual and it's a good idea to keep the operating manual with the machine at all times. That way if you get a problem or you need to review how to do a function, you can turn to the table of contents and that'll uh, get you into the right section of the manual so that you can use the machine properly. We're going to turn the machine on. First thing we want to look at is how much refrigerant we have in the machine and you can see that we have plenty of refrigerant, 13.21 pounds. We also are going to look at the high pressure gauge and the low pressure gauge and uh, that confirms now that there is nothing, there's no refrigerant in the system. We've done the repairs to the evaporator so we're going to now hook on the nitrogen and we're going to pressurize it to about 200 psi and then we can use some soap and water through the system and we can also use the pressure, the 200 psi and see during that soap and water if it drops at all that'll indicate a leak. If it holds and we don't find any air bubbles then uh, we can vacuum and charge. So now we're going to nitrogen test the system. We've got our nitrogen bottle here with a pressure regulator. This gauge shows how much is in the tank. This one shows how much pressure we're going to put in the system. Sorry, By hang on. I missed this. We're going to hook on the nitrogen now to pressure test the system to confirm that the repairs that we've made are, uh, are going to hold without a leak. So we just simply open up our uh, nitrogen bottle. It's got a pressure regulator on it. The first gauge is going to show how much uh, is in the tank. In the second gauge, we're going to adjust with the pressure regulator, adjusting screw to 200 psi. We've got a manifold gauge connected to that regulator via the center line which is yellow and we're going to hook on, we've hooked into the system using the low pressure line and we're just going to crack that line open and allow nitrogen to fill the system. To our 200 psi. Now
Now the system's full. We can uh, verify on our high side gauge that we have uh, 200 psi, and then we can turn the we can uh, isolate the air conditioning system by by turning the gas off and watching the pressure gauges to make sure that they don't drop. We use the main um, air conditioning pressure gauge to check that.